I got to ask you about the moon. Um, so there's a there's a piece of the moon on this table yes. that you've given me. Yes. Uh, that we didn't have to pick up that arrived here. That's right. So how did a piece of the moon arrive here on Earth? So this chunk of the moon, if it were delivered by uh, the Apollo and NASA missions, uh, you and I would be guilty of a felony right now because it's illegal to own pieces of the moon collected by the Apollo astronauts. So don't even joke about that when you go over to Houston. This piece of moon rock was delivered via the old-fashioned way by gravity. So this was a uh, chunk of the moon, which is blasted off because the moon gets bombarded by asteroids and meteoroids. Some of them eject material from the surface of the moon into space. And it will then orbit the common uh, moon-Earth system. And it will then eventually enter our atmosphere. And if the piece is large enough and the trajectory is proper, it can land intact. And this one landed with a few uh, hundred grams worth, and they sliced it up. And then it was delivered via U.S. Postal Service to, to my house. So you can buy these pieces. And actually, you can buy a piece of Mars. You can buy a piece of Mars delivered by the same route. Now, what's so interesting about that? Well, if a piece of Mars can get here, a piece of Earth can get there, if some piece of Earth has some life forms on it, it could get there. And if that can happen in our solar system, it could happen throughout the galaxy. So I'm actually not of the opinion that there is life elsewhere in the universe, <laughs> at least technological life that we can see. I see this look of horror on your face. Um, I view it, <laughs> I am personally extremely pessimistic, would be extremely surprised. I'm, I'm just, I'm curious by the transition because you just said that life could have arrived from Mars or like from planet to planet by because of the meteorite striking it and so on. Yeah. And then you went to, you don't think there, there might be life out there in the universe. Technological life. Technological life. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, advanced intelligent civilizations. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so go on. <laughs> yeah, so that's a the generalization of what uh, the famous astronomer Fred Hoyle called, I, I know this is a PG-13 pocket, it's called panspermia, mm. panspermia. And, uh, beep that out, please. Yeah, yeah, please. And uh, that's the exchange of, of uh, you know, genetic life form material from uh, other reaches on Earth, which explains the origin of life on Earth, but not the origin of life itself, which I think is a much grander mystery and much more interesting. How did life get here? And you've talked with many eminent people about that. Um, I'm not going to add that much, but but just thinking about the reverse process. Let's say life started on the Earth somehow uh, and then made its way out into the universe. Is there enough time for the whatever material went from Earth via panspermic direction, you know, spraying the love gun out into the universe? Did that then have enough time to incubate and go onto a planet that could support it? Certainly not within our solar system, which traveling at the meteorite speeds would require, you know, hundreds of millions of years. Then looking at the evolutionary history from bacteria to Bach, from, you know, rocks to Rachmaninoff. I don't know. I can do this all day. Oh, wow. That's pretty yeah. good. How do you get from those you know, very simple inanimate objects to life? I just simply think there's not enough time for Earth to seed life, technological life throughout the galaxy. I don't think there's any evidence for that.